Today's story is about Coletta Ram. On October 30, 1983, 16-year-old English girl Coletta Ram became the victim of one such random criminal. Even though the horrific crime took place in broad daylight, there was little she could have done to prevent it. Her abductor meticulously planned to abduct and murder a girl any girl. Unfortunately for Colette, that girl just happened to be her. Coletta Ram grew up in the small town of Keyworth, England. In many ways, 1983 Keyworth was emblematic of a bygone era in British history. Keyworth is located in the north-central region of England, far from the crime and problems of London, Manchester, Liverpool, and the other major cities of Britain. Coletta Ram's parents believed it was the perfect place to raise their daughter. Colette lived at home with her parents, but was training to be a hairdresser and hoped to use that to find a job in order to save some money so that she could get a place of her own or possibly to move in with her boyfriend. Often, Colette's boyfriend would pick her up at her family's home and then the two would go out on the town or spend a quiet evening at his place. On the evening of October 30, 1983, Colette's boyfriend's car was having problems, so she decided to make the short walk to his place. The Aram's neighborhood was usually active with children and adults socializing, so the scene was nothing out of the ordinary. Once Colette finished talking with her neighbors, she rounded the corner and was never seen alive again. It did not take long for searchers to find the naked body of Colette Aram, which was located in a wooded area less than a mile from her family's home. A monster was walking the streets of quiet Keyworth. The forensic examiners dutifully cataloged all of the physical evidence relating to the case, including the semen from inside Colette, although the technology of the time limited what they could do with it. Since Colette was on her way to see her boyfriend, he immediately went to the top of the list of the police's persons of interest. The Nottinghamshire Police Keyworth is within the Shire of Nottingham, which is close to the equivalent of an American county thought that the letter was the break they needed to solve the case. Hoping that someone would recognize the killer's writing, the police published part of the letter, but they received no responses. The murder of Coletta Ram went cold for nearly 30 years. When Coletta Ram was raped and murdered in 1983, deoxyribonucleic acid was known to scientists, but they had yet to learn how to develop DNA profiles that are specific to each person. Around the time Colette was murdered, scientists in the United Kingdom, not far from her home, were developing a process whereby each person's unique genetic profile could be mapped and profiled. Despite the great leap forward made in the science, it still took a long time to compile an accurate DNA profile well into the 1990s, and large samples were often needed. By the 2000s, though, the science had advanced enough that a DNA profile could be gleaned from a sample within hours and scientists learned how to extract a profile from mitochondrial DNA. Although the police who originally investigated Colette's murder were hampered by limited DNA science, they were far-sighted and skilled enough to properly preserve the physical evidence from the case, namely the killer's semen, that was extracted from Colette. For the first few years after Colette's murder, the semen sample sat in an evidence locker, but by the 2000s the case was re-evaluated when the United Kingdom created a national database of DNA taken from criminals, both those convicted and charged, as well as DNA taken from cold cases. As required under British law, the man was forced to submit a sample of his DNA for the national database, and after doing so it turned out that his DNA was a near match to Colleen's killer. A sample of Paul Hutchinson's DNA was taken, and it was quickly determined that he was in fact the person who left his DNA in Coletta Ram. Hutchinson was charged with the Ram's murder in 2009 and seeing that he had no defense against a positive DNA match, pleaded guilty in January 2010 to her murder. In court, the once large and imposing rail worker looked like a shell of his former self. He was suffering from diabetes, walked with a cane, and would now have to spend the rest of his life in prison. Although the process took nearly 30 years to complete, Colette's family was glad that the case was finally over and they could at last have their closure. But life in prison was not a prospect Paul Hutchinson wanted to face. Just a few months after he pled guilty to Colette's murder, Hutchinson was found dead in his cell of an apparent drug overdose. He may have cheated justice in this world, but the next world will probably not be so forgiving. That's it. See you next time with another true murder story.